topic is the history of the African American in Nashville between 1780 and 1930. And the author of the history is Dr. Bobby Lovett, the Dean of Arts and Sciences at uh, Tennessee State University. And of course, Dr. Lovett, before we had our first commercial break, you were giving us an overview in reference to some of the things that you covered in uh, this book. And let's continue that uh, conversation and have you to sort of uh, enlighten our audience during this uh, segment of some of the things that they probably don't know about Nashville, Tennessee, and et cetera, and about African Americans in, in Nashville that will make this book a part of their library and a part of the resources and uh, mm -hmm. a resource, uh, a source in, right. uh, instrument for them. Right. Well, again, as I said, about 22% of African Americans were free in Nashville during slavery times, and another 25% were what we call hired slaves. Mm -hmm and they could be hired out for 100 to 150 dollars a year. Mm -hmm. Well today people say well, that's not a lot of money, it was a lot of money then. Mm -hmm. The average uh, uh, person back in that day and time would probably realize not even a hundred dollars in cash money in one year. Mm -hmm. So uh, for a slave master or owner mm -hmm. to have a person go out and earn 150 dollars and they could take all of it or most of it mm -hmm. uh, was uh, quite an a, a investment. Mm -hmm. But uh, African Americans were in demand as workers because remember this was a frontier city yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, by the 1840s Nashville has grown into quite a city you know mm -hmm. uh, there are steamboats by 1851 mm -hmm. of course there are railroads being built mm -hmm. to connect the city to uh, uh, to the outside world mm -hmm. uh, there are uh, uh, many businesses that mm -hmm. are serving the the uh, agricultural sector here mm -hmm. in Middle Tennessee mm -hmm and also businesses uh, like shipping that is uh, serving mm -hmm. the iron industry. Mm -hmm. Iron mines were operated all the way from Dixon County all the way up to the plateau mm -hmm. up to Kentucky mm -hmm. and about 10,000 slaves worked in mm -hmm. those iron mm -hmm. mines and we call those the iron slaves. Mm -hmm. uh, they uh, took the ore and smelted it just as they had done in Africa 600 mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, they of course turned uh, the uh, iron into pots, mm -hmm. into pans, into stoves, mm -hmm. and other iron products, tools mm -hmm. that people needed. Mm -hmm. And that was a big industry for mm -hmm. Nashville mm -hmm. and in Middle Tennessee. Mm -hmm. But in Nashville, the, the African Americans did all kinds of work. Mm -hmm. uh, almost all of the uh, barbers were African American mm -hmm. in Nashville. And that was a pretty lucrative industry mm -hmm. back in that day and time. They consisted of, uh, uh, they made up 85% of all the skilled trades. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. in the South in that particular day and time. Mm -hmm. So they were the carpenters, mm -hmm. uh, they were the bricklayers, the stone cutters, the stone layers, mm -hmm. uh, they were the coopers who made barrels, mm -hmm. they made wagons, they were the shoemakers. Mm -hmm. uh, Sarah Estale, for example, owned the only ice cream shop which mm -hmm. was on, mm -hmm. on Church Street during mm -hmm. that day and time. The bakers downtown were African Americans. When you had to go get your cakes yeah, and your mm -hmm. pies for mm -hmm. Christmas and so on, mm -hmm. then they had to go to African Americans who mm -hmm. made those particular products. Mm -hmm. The only pharmacist in town was owned by a slave who mm -hmm. was hired out by his master. His <laughs> name was Jack. Mm -hmm. And they called him Jack the Root Doctor because all of the medicines that he had were from roots and herbs mm -hmm. and he was very knowledgeable mm -hmm. of those particular roots and herbs mm -hmm. that you could use for mending the body. Mm -hmm. So most of his customers were not African Americans mm -hmm. but of course most of his customers were mm -hmm. the whites in town but they depended upon him mm -hmm. and his shop was on Church Street. Mm -hmm. And if you went to what today is 4th and uh, Charlotte Avenue mm -hmm. That was the corner that African Americans dominated as the hack service or hack business. Mm -hmm. In other words, today we call it the taxi Tax service. Mm -hmm. Very good. Mm -hmm. But all of the hack drivers in town were African Americans. Mm -hmm. And if you stayed in the business and hustle, you could become quite wealthy. Mm -hmm. So free Negroes dominated that trade, mm -hmm. but also some slave masters let their slaves hire out as hack mm -hmm. drivers because they also could earn a lot of money if the slaves brought the money home to them. And so they had a system that, and, and that's something that we generally don't think about in terms of uh, the slave, because I think in many instances when we see slavery, or we think of slavery, we think of slaves uh, in the cotton fields, or in cane fields, and et cetera. Mm -hmm. So what you're telling us now here is that in Nashville, that you have personally identified mm -hmm. a large number of areas and a large, large number of activities. Is that what we're saying here? That is not agriculture mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. urban slavery 
ultimately evolved mm -hmm. into something totally different mm -hmm. than plantation and farm slavery. And so there were all kinds of ordinary jobs mm -hmm. that uh, African Americans had in town as opposed to mm -hmm. um, out in the countryside. Mm -hmm. Give you one example. A slave woman by the name of Sally Thomas, mm -hmm. who was born in uh, 1790, died in, in 1850. Mm -hmm. Her master uh, allowed her to hire out her time mm -hmm. because uh, three of the boys, two of the boys that Sally had were the master's sons. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sally set up a, um, a boarding house where the Radisson uh, mm -hmm. or the Doubletree Hotel is mm -hmm. located today. Mm -hmm. And she took the part, top part of that house and rented it out for rumors mm -hmm. who came to the General Assembly, you know, mm -hmm. and they stayed at Sally's house. She was mm -hmm. a boarder. Mm -hmm. Downstairs, of course, she ran a laundry to wash their mm -hmm. clothes and so on. <laughs> In the front room, her boys, they cut hair because African Americans dominated the barbering business. Mm -hmm. And so the Thomas family became quite prosperous. Mm -hmm. One of the boys left town and moved to St. Louis where he mm -hmm. died in 1913. Mm -hmm. And he owned a whole string of barber shops in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. He even owned real estate in Nashville mm -hmm. before he left here in, in 1856. Mm -hmm. Another one of her sons left and moved to Alabama where he became a large real estate dealer mm -hmm. and a barber. Mm -hmm and his grandson became the first African-American congressman from the state of Alabama in 1872 mm -hmm. after slavery. Mm -hmm. So there was the opportunity for slaves mm -hmm. to accumulate wealth mm -hmm. in the city as opposed, of course, to mm -hmm. living out in the countryside. Dr. Lovett, as we uh, <coughs> make preparations for this uh, second uh, commercial break, we've got about a minute before that, but let me, uh, since you're talking about how skilled these individuals are in uh, mm -hmm. giving us all this surprising information, uh, when you think about all of these uh, antebellum homes that you see, and uh, since you mentioned that African Americans were involved in the crafts and building, et cetera, uh, you see a, a, a hermitage plantation or a bell mm -hmm. mead plantation. Uh, did African Americans have anything to do with the construction of this, or did you identify Absolutely. what they were able to do? And uh, when we come back, well, we, we're uh -huh. getting ready for this uh, commercial break, but when we come back, we want you to bring together <coughs> the information that you have from this book mm -hmm. dealing with uh, what they were able to do and how they were able to be involved in some of these large projects. Okay. So I think the general impression is that while they might have been there, they really didn't build the bell meads and the other, they didn't have anything to do with that. And that's what we want to okay. do, I think, because I think that here you've covered that uh, quite extensively, we know, and so we want you to do that. <clears throat> and of course, we'll do that when we come back for this uh, final segment, and we'll be back with you following this short commercial break. to the dean of the